This is the new McLaren Artura, and it's a little bit like the MCL60. In case you don't know what that is, it's McLaren's current Formula One car. You see, just like the Formula One car, this Artura has a V6 engine and a hybrid system. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you what's good about the car. Ooh, I like that. What's not so good about the car. That's odd. I'm gonna take it for a jolly good drive and thrash the pants off it. And of course, I'm gonna launch it to see how quick it is from naught to 60 miles an hour and over the standing quarter mile. Because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, wow. Let's start off this video by talking about the design of the McLaren Artura. And my favorite angle is this, because I love the rear end on it. I especially like this huge deck with the integrated spoiler. This metal cover for the engine looks cool, though it's got holes in it, which means that when it rains, the engine will get wet. I'm sure that doesn't matter. I like the location of the exhaust pipes as well. And of course they are real. There's no fakery here. This is a McLaren. Everything serves a purpose. And if you want to, you can change these exhaust tips from black to silver. Obviously not when you're driving, you spec the car that way. Anyhow, if you want to spec your car with a bit of carbon fiber, you can go for an MSO upgrade, and then you have carbon fiber for the rear splitter and the front splitter and the door mirrors. Obviously that adds to the cost though. Moving to the side, you've got 20 inch alloy wheels at the rear, 19s at the front, and you can spec the brake calipers in a choice of one of six different colors. Of course, carbon ceramics come as standard, which is good news on a car with this kind of performance. From the side, my favorite part is this, the flying buttresses. I love this design feature, though it looks like they might fly off. Hmm. I also like this huge air vent here down the side of the car. You've got a radiator in there and I think that's the air intake for the engine. Though this panel sort of reminds me a little bit of the Lotus Emira. See what I mean? I do like the doors though on the McLaren. They're better than on the Lotus Emira. So it looks like you've got a door handle, but you don't pull on it. You just press a button and it opens the window a bit. Then you can lift the door up like that. That feels special like a proper supercar should. Right, moving down the sides. If you want, you can have these little air vents in carbon fiber. And once again, they serve a purpose. They release pressure from the wheel arch and allow it to flow out to improve your aerodynamics. Here at the front, you have a slightly different look compared to a 720S. I've never really liked that car's headlights. I much prefer these on the Artura. Also, you've got some radiators there, more real vents there. Like I say, everything on this car serves a purpose. And I think it looks purposeful. It's a good looking car. Some might say it's a bit generic, but I don't, I like it. And you've got a choice of 15 different colors and a further 16 through the MSO program. In terms of the body panels, mixture of aluminum and plastic composite. The chassis itself is a carbon fiber tub with aluminum subframes at the front and the back. In terms of the price, well, it starts from just under 190,000 pounds. Though this one here with options, 214,000 pounds. Now, if you're thinking about buying something like this, you probably need to sell your current car and you can do that through CarWow. All you have to do is upload some photos of your car, give a brief description, then dealers all across the country will bid on your car. Just pick the highest offer, they'll come to your house, take the car away and put the money into your account. It's easy. Now, if you wanna do that right away, find out more information, just click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below. Alternatively, you can do it at a later date by simply Googling help me car wow and we will help you sell your car. Here on the inside, the Atura, like other McLarens I've sat in, has a brilliant driving position. So you sit nice and low, the pedals and the steering wheel are all just like in a perfect place. And with these club sport seats, which are bucket seats, you can move them forwards and backwards. And there is a function to raise and lower them. And when you're raising and lowering it, it does tilt slightly. So while you do have no ability to change the backrest angle, you can actually alter how upright or how more racing driver you sit. Speaking of which, you can go into this infotainment screen here and set various driving positions, which is handy depending on how you like to sit, depending on what type of driving you're doing. Speaking of which, McLaren steering wheel. McLaren likes to just keep the steering wheel thin, so it's nice to hold and simple with no buttons on it. And that brings you onto this instrument binnacle here, which moves with the steering wheel which is a good thing. And on it are the controls for the different drive modes and the different chassis settings. So it seems a bit weird having them on rocker switches up here, but they feel nice because they're made out of metal. And when you think about it, when you're driving along, you can quickly just dab like that while holding the wheel to change either your powertrain setting 
or your suspension setting. And I like the fact they're separate so you can have like hardcore track focus drive system and yet comfort for the suspension, which is perfect for driving on bumpy British roads. Now we should talk about this infotainment system and digital driver's display because it's all new for McLaren. And I like it, it gives you plenty of information, the graphics are nice and sharp and you can cycle through different menus and functions using this little lever down here. And depending on which driving mode you're in, the display will be slightly different. There's also a new main infotainment screen here and it's fairly easy to use to just go back to the main menu. You hit that button on the side, which is also the volume for your stereo. And then you can swipe through the different menus. It's pretty logical. It works. Well, I say it works. The other day, the navigation froze on me. But when I restarted the car, it was fine. Obviously you do your climate control through there, but it's actually quite easy to operate while you're driving. Another thing to note is that your gear select modes and your start button are down here, which brings me on to the cup holders. So you've got two and they're quite useful. There's a cup holder there as well. Also under here, there is some storage and you've got one USB there and then another one specifically USB-C for your mobile phone. Speaking of which, this car has Apple CarPlay and it will have Android Auto and it's gonna be fitted at a later date. And if you buy a car now, you can have it retrofitted. Speaking of mobile phones, there's a handy little slot there where you can fit a mobile phone. Mine is a little bit too chunky. However, with these club sports seats, there's little holes in them there where you can put your mobile phone. That's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. I like that. I don't know if that's the idea. There's also a little place there where you can put something, but it once again won't fit my mobile phone. That's one of the reasons to have these seats. And if you don't like bucket seats, you can actually change them for no cost to comfort seats. Though I wouldn't do that because these are just really good and body hugging, which is perfect when you're driving on track. Now the interior design is pretty simplistic. This one has Alcantara on the dash, then it's leather down here, and it matches the Alcantara on the seats. What doesn't match though, is this orangey piping here. It's a slightly different color to that one up there. Another thing I'm not so keen on is in places, the build quality is a bit iffy. Look at that, look at that. What's, what's one of these bits? I do like this though. You get this little fold down mirror there. That feels nice and expensive. Though there's no actual light for the vanity mirror and you can't detach the blind to put it over there to block sun from the side. Oh well, not gonna hate the car for that. What might be a bit more annoying is the fact that, you know, this is a car you're probably gonna take on track. And if you're really serious, you might have some racing gloves, but there's no glove box in which to store them when you're not racing. Still, there is a bit of storage behind you here on this shelf. Though if you put things there, you're not gonna be able to see out the back window. And actually the view at the back is pretty good. What's the rest of the practicality like then? Let's find out, see how much space there is in the front boot. The luggage capacity is 160 litres, which might not sound like much, but it's 60 litres more than you get in the front boot on a Lamborghini Huracan Technica. If you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below. Now, if I just remove this bag, which contains the charging cables, I can show you how spacious this front boot is by getting into it. Oh, look. We've also got this bag here. It's a tool kit. And there's a fire extinguisher as well there. Both of those items come as standard. Quite a few things on this car don't. So I'm gonna run you through the options now. This car has the performance interior, which costs 4,400 pounds. And it includes things such as McLaren branded floor mats, larger gear shifter paddles, and Alcantara bits around the cabin. Oh, I love Alcantara, especially on the steering wheel. Stealth finished exhaust tips, £1,000. Satin titanium engine cover, £500. Dark stealth wheel finish, £1,380. And special colour calipers, £1,570. The carbon fibre interior pack is an extra £4,000 and it includes carbon fibre on the steering wheel, the paddle shifters and this centre console area down here. Then there's a technology pack, which will set you back £6,800. It includes a 360 degree parking camera system, adaptive cruise control, and a banging Bowers and Wilkins stereo. For £750, you can add the McLaren track telemetry, which will log your lap times. This car's got it, but I can't seem to find out where it is. Where is it? Finally, this car is also fitted with a sports exhaust system, which costs an extra £4,700. Let's have a little listen to it. Rev it up. It's certainly loud, but the engine just doesn't sound as good as that in the Ferrari 296. And that brings you on to five annoying things about the McLaren Artura. 
Some people say that McLarens don't have the best reliability record nor build quality. I have absolutely no idea what they could be talking about. This car is always making some cooling fan or electric whirring noise. The car is actually off, but you get a terrible reflection of the metallic speakers in the windscreen. It's really off-putting. The way the hybrid system works is a little bit odd. So when you first turn the car on, it defaults to electric only mode. So when you first pull away, it's gonna be using the power of the electric motor alone. The internal combustion engine only fires up when one of two things happen. Either the battery reaches a minimum level of charge or you choose one of the other driving modes. At that point, it fires up. However, the car holds its revs of 1,500 RPM to heat up the cats. And regardless of how you press the throttle, it doesn't rev the engine until those cats are heated up. So you'll be driving along and when you accelerate, it's only using the power of the electric motor. So you're effectively driving a 95 horsepower supercar. Once those cats have heated up, then you get full engine power and the engine can now power the rear wheels. So you get full 680 horsepower going to the road. It's strange and I'll show you now. So the car is on. I'm gonna put it into drive mode comfort, which will fire up the engine. There we go. It's holding the revs up about one and a half. No matter what I do with the throttle, look, it's not revving, it's not doing anything. It's busy heating up the cats. So, when I drive away, it's gonna be using the motor alone, look. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. The door bins are just about large enough to accommodate a big bottle. But you might be wondering, what happens if you put something valuable like your mobile phone in there? Forget it's there and then open the door. Surely it's going to drop out and smash a screen. Ooh, nope. They're designed so that anything just slides to this part here. Phew. <laughs> you can set different pressures for the tyre pressure warning sensor. So if you want, you can enable track mode and set much lower pressures if you'd like to. And it won't flag up a warning on the dash when you have low pressures while driving on track. Also, you have full details of the tyre pressures as well, which will show you the pressures here on the screen and the temperatures. While this car has the same seven-speed dual-clutch automatic gearbox as other McLarens, what they've done is something very clever. They've swapped the reverse gear out for another forward gear, so you have eight forward gears, and to make the car go backwards, they just run the motor in reverse. Brilliant. The washer jets for the windscreen are actually built into the windscreen wiper blade and there's loads of them. So it gives it a jolly good washing without suddenly spraying the windscreen, giving it a second before it wipes it away like it does on many other cars, which is an ideal when you're driving in something that can do around 200 miles an hour. The Artura gets a nose lift as standard. It's really handy when you're driving on roads with speed humps. It means you don't rip your splitter off. There we go. Now we come to the exciting bit, the engine. It's underneath this cover, which I can't remove because I don't have the right tools. But what is hidden underneath there is a three litre twin turbo V6, which puts out 585 horsepower. It's mated to an electric motor that's about the same size as the front brake disc on this car. That motor puts out 95 horsepower and combined you have 600 and 80 horsepower. The system also produces 720 newton meters of torque and it drives the rear wheels only by an eight speed dual clutch automatic gearbox. Now, on the rear axle, you have an electronically controlled limited slip differential. Finally, McLaren are fitting limited slip differentials to its modern road cars. The result is a car that can do 0 to 60 in three seconds. And we'll see exactly how quick it is when I launch it in a moment. Top speed. 205 miles an hour. The main talking point about the McLaren Artura is the fact that it's a plug-in hybrid. It has a seven kilowatt hour battery pack, which you can charge using a seven kilowatt wall charger in a few hours. That'll give you 90 miles of range. That's 19, not 90. This isn't what's most exciting about it though, the battery stuff, is it? I'm going to start off by finding out what this Altura is like to drive in town. It may seem odd with a car like this, but as it's able to run on electric power for up to 19 miles, in town you're going to drive it 
in electric only mode, which is what I'm doing. And it's quite nice to just pootle about in silence without causing a disruption to other road users or people in your local quiet village. Another thing that's interesting when you're just driving around is how well this car's suspension deals with bumps for this type of vehicle. It's really very good. Then there's the brakes, very smooth, very progressive. That's because McLaren actually doesn't do any regen effect on the brakes at all. It's all done in the gearbox. And so the brakes just feel perfectly natural. They didn't want to dilute that at all. It's like with the steering, it's not an electrical system, it's hydraulic, so you get more feel. It's not important around town, that. What it is, is that it's light enough to maneuver the car when we finally get to maneuver the car. Tell you what, driving around in traffic like this, so much better just having it in electric only mode. Now, McLaren don't publish a turning circle for this car, but let's see if it is maneuverable enough. I'm gonna cause problems right from the get-go. Look, I've, yeah, I've cocked this right up. Oh dear. And now I've got to reverse. Oh, I'm gonna have the problem where, look, when you're at full lock, the steering wheel spoke just covers your reversing camera, so you have to rely on this one, which is all a bit distorted, and I can't be sure where I am. That's not ideal. I'll tell you one thing I've also noticed about this. McLarens tend to have good visibility and the view out the back is good. The door mirrors are big enough and the low dash means that you get a good view forward. However, this instrument binnacle that moves with the steering wheel does seem a little bit higher than on other McLarens I've driven. I don't think the forward visibility is quite as good in this. This just blocks your view a little bit to what it could be if you're looking that way. I might drive like this. That's better, I quite like that. Shame they just didn't have a lower instrument binnacle or maybe a heads-up display instead. Other than that though, for driving around town, as supercars go, this is pretty blooming impressive. There is one slight thing, it is that perhaps I would like some more regen when I lift off the accelerator, but maybe that's just not possible when it's through the gearbox as opposed to the brakes. It just won't quite give you that and it can't give you one pedal driving. That's how it doesn't feel like an electric car when you're driving in an EV only mode. Now you can actually drive at up to 81 miles an hour in electric only mode so let's head out onto some faster roads to see what that's like the performance in electric only mode isn't stellar 95 horsepower doesn't quite feel like enough you know you can just poodle around but you just feel like you're a very cheap electric car in terms of the performance it's not so mclaren -y. though to be fair that's really not what this car is about i mean it can do it but you don't really want to plus you soon eat through your range so here comes a bit of dual carriageway. So I'm now going to engage the internal combustion engine. I'm going to put my foot down to accelerate. Here we go. Accelerating from 40 miles an hour to pass the car in front. Flooring it now. Yeah, I haven't got full power. The engine's got to warm up. I've got my foot to the floor and I'm still accelerating in electric only mode. Yeah, still electric only mode and I'm at the speed limit eventually. It's funny how this car just always starts in electric only mode and then you have to switch it into normal and then it takes an age for you to be able to use the petrol engine. Still, no, it's not letting me use the petrol engine. Let's go into manual mode. Won't let me go into manual mode because still running in electric only. Now I've got one mile of range left on electric so it's gonna to have to allow me to use the petrol engine soon. There it is, got it, finally. How long did that take? Really not sure about that whole concept. You don't have that with the Ferrari 296. And if you wanna see my full in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below. I think their hybrid system probably works a little bit better. Now I can go into manual mode and now I have full power. Now this car will never let you deplete the battery. It'll always keep you in reserve so you can make that full 680 horsepower. In normal mode, it's using the motor to just improve your efficiency. In sports, it uses it to torque fill the gap in the turbocharger when you have a bit of turbo lag. So now what I'm gonna do is hit this, go into sports mode. Here we go. Yeah, pickup is really good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this thing has some performance. <laughs> it really does. I think that works really well now, this hybrid system. I'll take it all back. It's doing a great job of just filling in the torque. And it means this car responds really well to the throttle. Plus it's doing that thing that McLarens always do. They just go down a road beautifully. Crappy, bumpy British country roads. The suspension just deals with it so well. Keeping all four wheels on the ground, giving you maximum traction and the benefit of that hydraulic power steering. Lots of feel, super accurate. Oh, it all feels so good. Same with the brakes, not diluted by having that regen effect through them. All perfectly natural and what you expect. And yes, they are strong. 
along. And the amount of feel I'm getting through the wheel, I can feel the road surface. So there's a bit of kickback through the steering, but I like that because I'm just reading the road surface like braille through my fingers. Oh, and there we go, out of that corner there. The torque fill, I'm in fourth, no lag, not feeling any lag, and it just drives. Now, I wanna put it into track mode, but for that, I think I need to go to something that's more like a track. Now, I'm not technically on a track, but a closed bit of road. Let's try this car out. I've got the suspension in track mode, and of course, the drive mode in track as well. I think the track setting for the suspension might be a little bit too bumpy even for this, so I'm going to dial that back into sport. This should give the perfect balance. Yeah, that's about right. I mean, really, on the road, you just need comfort. Oof. As with all McLarens, you really do appreciate the steering when you start hammering the car because it's just so good. And it makes you realise what you're missing when you're driving cars with electrical power steering systems. They just don't have the feel. Oh, it's so neutral, this car. Maybe it could do with being a little bit more loose, perhaps a bit more playful, but whew, you can't fault it for accuracy and poise. Oh my gosh, the way it went around there was epic. It does rotate when you just trail brake into a corner, get the weight onto the nose, the back end starts to come round, tines your line. Oh, it might be a plug-in hybrid, but it's still a proper McLaren supercar, this thing. <laughs> it's like a baby P1. However, unlike the P1, this car has a limited slip differential, so let's go have a play with that. I've always found McLaren's a little bit hard to drift in because they've had open diffs. Let's see if it's easier with this. Now we've got a proper electronically controlled limited slip diff, so here we go. Yeah, definitely a lot easier. Round and round the mulberry bush we go. <laughs> There's actually a special thing you can do by putting the ESC into a halfway house and then using a drift controller, variable drift control. And it should allow you to slide without spinning out. I did it just then with everything off, but let's see if this makes it easier. I can feel the car actually controlling it, yeah. That's actually really good. That was easier. I wasn't able to get quite the angle, but it just meant I didn't have to balance the throttle quite so much. That's quite impressive, actually. There's only one more thing for me to do, and you know what that is. Right, now I'm gonna launch this car to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour and over the standing quarter mile. I'm gonna launch it first of all in electric only mode to experience the full fury of that 95 horsepower electric motor. Let's do this. Wow, I feel as though my internal organs are being rearranged. The G-force is so tremendous. Here comes 60 miles an hour. 15 seconds, yes! What's the quarter mile? 19.8 seconds. It's not very quick in electric only mode. Guess that's not really what it's designed to do. Let's do this properly, yeah? That's track mode enabled. Let's give it another run. Not 60, 3.01. <laughs> I'd say that was on the money. What a mile, 10.5 seconds. I think it'll go quicker though. Do you know what? I'm gonna have the stability control fully on because with McLarens often it's so well calibrated that it's better to let that just control things than to have some wheel slip, which I had there. So can we break the three second barrier? So close, let's give it another go. No wheel spin that time. <laughs> 3.02. Would it be better on the quarter mile? No. <laughs> 10.58. That was like different by 0.01 of a second. I'm going to give it one more go and I'm going to have the stability control all the way off now. That's rubbish. Yeah, 
was terrible. It was over 11 seconds for the quarter mile. 0.60, 3.65. One last go. Stability in halfway house seems to be the best. That was clean. That was good. Oh, no, didn't do it. So the best I had was 3.01 to 60 miles an hour and a 10.57 over the quarter mile. Can't say I didn't try. Still pretty blooming impressive, you know, 0 0.01 of a second off what McLaren says. And you'd round it down, wouldn't you? So it's actually bang on the money. Now I'm gonna do a brake test from 100 miles an hour. We'll see how long it takes to stop from 100, but also from 60. Go to the brake test now. Right, so from 100, it took 89 meters, and from 60, it took 32 meters. So then, what's my final verdict on the new McLaren Artura? Should you avoid it, should you consider it, should you shortlist it, or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should just go right ahead and buy the Artura. It really is an excellent all-round hybrid supercar. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know if you agree with my decision in the comments below. Click on those windows there for some more videos and on that box there to go to CarWow to silly car the easy way. Thanks for watching.